Hi everyone, how you doing? No, I'm not pushing up daisies somewhere. I'm right here again. So, uh, I finally ran into something a little bit interesting and I thought you might like to see it. Uh, here's my little Tesla coil. This is running on the Slayer circuit. And it's doing a pretty nice job. As you can see, Right now the circuit is uh, running at um, 200, 260 milliamps and the battery voltage is 11 volts. That's a, um, the battery is my uh, alum battery that you've seen in some of the other videos. So you can see this is going pretty good. Got some nice experiments going here. I have to uh, I can do this without breaking anything. Uh, there's something here on the table that you can't see, so let me pick up my camera and we'll take a look at that. Okay, we're going to we're going to take a look at this stuff a little closer in just a little while, but there's something here that I wanted to show you. Here's um, a little incandescent bulb, and that's running from this coil here, and the aluminum here is a basically a capacitor and that does some tuning. This wire here is a ground wire. It, it just helps. So you can see you can see here that there's no no wires attached to the circuit anywhere. But you can see how I can I can tune this and get the bulb to light. So this is a 12 volt bulb and my hand is changing the capacitance as I tune. That's why that's why I take this ground wire and set it up here. At, let me let me get that caught in there and I'll just stick it in behind this heat sink. It's not it's not connected with a bare wire, it's just uh, laying behind there. Now you can see I can tune this a lot better with that on it. So you, you can see that's running from the energy coming off of the uh, Tesla coil being picked up over here. Um, what's kind of interesting about that is uh, a little surprise about where it's the energy is, as you can see over here, I'm going to put a neon bulb. You can see it lights up way out here. I don't know how close I can get with my camera and not get in trouble. But. And you can see just the tiniest little arc going up on the coil. I think you should be able to see that. So that's coming off the wire. But I'm going to go over here to the receiver and there's nothing coming off of the coil. Doesn't light. But look where it's coming from on the heat sink. So I thought that to be a little bit unusual. Anyhow, I wanted to film this part of it because I think that this resonance over here on this receiver is so sensitive that uh, <laughs> I might uh, lose it at any time. So I wanted to make sure I got it documented. You can see here that the voltage of the battery is 11.1 .1 and uh, top left of this little meter it says that we're using about 230 milliamps. So I think all in all, with all this stuff going, that uh, that's pretty doing pretty good. And uh, I've also run this motor on a uh, AV plug, and we'll look at that a little bit later too. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview about what we'll be talking about here, and uh, I'll go into the the coils a little bit and the circuit uh, following this. So hang in there. 
All right, getting back to this coil, you really need to have a look at it because uh, whatever you do, you don't want to duplicate this one. Uh, this is so far off from being done right that it's not even funny. And uh, well, I'll tell you why. But it also shows that uh, you can almost make anything work. So first of all, the tube itself is way, way too tall and too thin with not enough turns. So I think that's only about an inch and a half diameter. Now the, the tubes, both the, uh, uh, the high voltage tube or secondary and the primary are made out of cardboard. You can never use cardboard. Uh, cardboard can hold uh, moisture and it's not really strong and you can get some arcing through when you get driving this thing with a little bit more power uh, i happen to soak the cardboard fully in uh, plastic uh, uh, material so it probably helps with the moisture and it works and uh, i know better now but <laughs> funny this uh this coil i made probably uh um decades ago, ago. I was just a kid and saw Tesla coils in the uh, uh, science magazines and the um, physics magazines. And I just wanted to wrap a coil that looked in, looked like a Tesla coil, so I did that. It's been sitting around, I don't know, 40, almost maybe 50 years. So I decided to give it a try. Uh, before, you, you know, it was hard to get some high voltage sources when you were, were a kid with no money, but um, uh, now with the Slayer circuits and transistor circuits, uh, you can experiment with this stuff a lot easier. So I tried the coil, and as you can see, the bulbs work. Uh, it lights pretty nice. So that's that's the coils. The circuit is the Slayer circuit. Yeah, where is it? <laughs> well, you know, there's there's a resistor there, and there's a diode behind it, and there's a transistor here. Well, you know, that's it. I mean, what we got here is is this, basically. And let me turn this over. So this is the circuit. And that's all there is to it. Don't ever forget your grounding. You don't want to miss the ground. Your instruments will go crazy if you try to measure anything, whatever, you know. Just be careful, but I think this is probably safer than a big old spark gap. You can learn a lot from this. So there's the, uh, the circuit. And uh, you can learn a lot of things from this. Let me, here's what I'm going to do. I'll show you. I'm going to turn the lights off. And you can see it's quite bright. give you an idea here of uh, what kind of power is coming off of this one. I've got a, a flash tube here. Isn't that cool? Pretty, huh? Okay, I'm going to move the tubes back just a little bit. That'll put a little bit more power on the coil itself. As you can see, you can get them back there pretty far and they stay lit pretty nice. I'm going to try this bulb. Aha! There we go. Isn't that cool? So anyhow, it's one heck of a lot of fun for a little bit of wire and some cardboard and about a two dollars worth of parts. Now the coil itself here, even though it's wrong, is uh, uh, about 
600 turns. It's about 600 turns on the secondary. And you really would like to have somewhere around seven, eight, nine hundred, maybe even a thousand turns. That happens to be, I think, 24, number 24 wire, which is a little bit heavier. That could be making a difference. I don't know. And let's look at this primary. Believe it or not, what this is, is solder wick. Desoldering wick because it's nice and flat, easy to wind. And you have to move up and down with this primary until you find the place that you get the most energy off your coil. So this just happened to be it. I made the tube uh, support the coil where it should be. And well, okay guys, so that's about it for this transmitter. Um, on the next video, we'll uh, take a look at how these motors run from the circuit and the uh, receiver and how I'm getting this much brighter light off of this setup in a different way and so keep your eye open for that video guys take care and we'll get back to you later